Hello, welcome to Teak's Career Day. My name is James Fisher, and I am the training manager for the Water and Wastewater Program here at Teak's. Today, we're gonna to talk about uh, opportunities in the water utilities industry, and this is where science and technology meets. So sit back and enjoy the presentation and a short video that we'll have that will show you some of the opportunities in the water utilities field. Okay, so today's presentation is on the water utilities industry and how you can become a professional in that industry. So the first question a lot of students end up asking is, what is it all about? You know, what is the water utilities industry? Some people end up saying, what, you want me to be a ditch digger? Come on. But it's not just being a ditch digger. Within the water utilities industry, there's all different types of jobs and opportunities. And for you as a student, the bounds are limitless. It's just based on what your imagination can end up being. And so I ask you, what do you think are the opportunities within the water utilities industry? So think about that for just a moment. So what is the water utilities industry? Basically, the water utilities industry is a human water cycle. You've all heard of the water cycle, the natural water cycle, that you learned about in elementary school and high school, where the rain falls, you take the rain, it evaporates back up into clouds, flows into lakes, rivers, and streams. Well, the water utility industry is similar, but it's all man-made, if you wanna say. We take the water from lakes, rivers, and streams. We store it in lakes and reservoirs. We also get water out of the ground via wells. Then we take that water and we treat it at a water treatment facility. The water is then stored in elevated storage tanks or ground storage tanks. And then that water is piped through a distribution system that comes to all the businesses and homes that are served by the utility. You then take that water from the tap drink it, cook with it, bathe with it, whatever. And then once you've used it, it goes down the drain. And in turn, that water goes through another series of pipes and manholes and another conveyance system, and it takes it to a wastewater treatment facility where the water is treated to a state that it can be returned to the environment. Now, our industry is a very regulated industry. We have many provisions that have to be met from requirements from the United States Environmental Protection Agency and here in Texas, the Texas Commission on Environmental Quality. So the people that end up operating these water and wastewater facilities must be licensed. And so you ask, well, what are the opportunities here in Texas? Well, just in Texas, there are 6,500 public water systems and about 4,000 wastewater systems. So there's a lot of facilities out there that need operators. And when it comes to potential employers, you've got cities, counties, water supply corporations, water districts, special utility districts, river authorities, and uh, some, util or, or some locations that have their own treatment facilities, like school districts, some private companies, operations companies, Texas Department of Transportation, Texas Parks and Wildlife, and Texas Department of Criminal Justice. So there's lots of opportunities out there. Some of you may end up asking, well, what type of position can I expect? Those are limitless. You can start out as a laborer, reading meters, water meters. Uh, you can be a sample technician, field technician. If you've had experience before, you could be a heavy equipment operator, crew leader, 
field supervisor, a laboratory technician, all the way up to a lab manager or a chemist. You could be a plant operator, mechanic, electrician, electronics technician, supervisor, superintendent, manager. There's other related fields. You could be an IT professional, accountant, engineer, customer support, admin support, even an attorney. But you get up to the higher levels of a div division director, public works director, utilities director, general manager, or even a city manager. So when it comes to the water utilities field, like I mentioned before, the positions, it's up to you. The positions are endless. Now, there's other opportunities that are related to our field. Those have to do with backflow prevention assembly testers, landscape irrigators, so the people that end up putting in your sprinkler system, and then two, on-site sewage facilities. What are those? Well, that's the folks that end up installing or regulating facilities that have septic tanks. So some of you may be in rural areas, and that's the industry that takes care of that. And those folks also have to be licensed. So there's opportunities there. Now, what are the advantages for working in the water utilities industry? Well, one, it's very stable employment because no matter what the economic situation is around the world, people are still needing to open up that tap and drink that water, and they're still needing to flush that commode. So there's always work in the water utilities industry. Now, for most of the employers, there's typically very good benefits, you know, health, dental, all that kind of stuff. And when it comes to the wages, yes, some can be low to start, but others can end up being very high if you stay in the industry a while. So there is lots of opportunity. So ask the question, what can TEKS do? Well, we offer the training that is either needed to get or maintain that state license that is required in our industry. So we provide face-to-face -face training, hands-on training, online training, even correspondence classes. And we have classes all over the state. We are considered the industry leader and we have many pathways to higher education. So please, take a look at the water utilities industry. Think about it as a profession, because it is a profession. And once you're in it, you are a water utilities professional. Thank you. Welcome to Texas A&M University's wastewater treatment plant. The first structure here is called the intake structure. It has many components and each is controlled by the operator. The first main structure is the bar screen. This removes large debris, rags, and plastics. And this material is then removed for disposal at a sanitary landfill. Once through the bar screen, the water moves through a channel and eventually air is added. And the water is slowed down so fine inorganic materials can settle out. This is what is called grit removal. Both the bar screen and grit removal are called preliminary treatment. To ensure compliance with regulatory agencies, the operators take samples at both the incoming and outgoing water and analyzes these samples for various parameters. The next step in the process is called primary treatment. The water will flow into what is called a primary clarifier. The water will flow into a tank and be allowed to slow down. The heavier organic material will settle to the bottom and the rakes you see direct the sludge to a hopper for removal. 
the clearer water then flows over a weir and onto the next step in the treatment process. Here you see a full tank in operation. Any floating material is caught by the skimmer arm and removed into a scum box. To ensure proper operations, the operator will check sludge levels in the tank. Here you have a motor control center where the operator can turn on and off any piece of equipment in the treatment plant. In this room are pumps and motors that move water from one process to another. Now begins the secondary treatment process. These are the aeration basins. This is where water gets treated by natural processes. Microorganisms take and use the incoming waste material and use it for food. The aeration adds air and provides the microorganisms with the proper environment for them to do their job. Here you see an empty aeration basin. In the bottom of the tank are diffusers. This is where the air is added. Since the microorganisms are alive, this process is called the activated sludge process. The activated sludge then moves from the aeration basin to another clarifier called the final clarifier. This is where the sludge settles and the clear water overflows the weir. Here again, the operator will ensure operational efficiency by taking various measurements. Next, the clear water flows for final disinfection prior to release back into the environment. Here, ultraviolet light is used to inhibit any pathogenic organisms that may have made it through the process. The water is now treated so that it is safe for release into the environment. The last step in the process is the water flowing through a partial flow, which is a flow measuring device. Within the plant, various pumps and motors move the water and sludge throughout the facility. The following are various shots of the tanks in normal operations. The sludge that is removed from the clarifiers are held in tanks called digesters. The digesters further treat the waste to a safe state and the liquid sludge is then pumped to a truck called an interrogator. It will take and apply the liquid sludge onto farmland as a soil enhancer or fertilizer. Here you see the operator in the control room of the facility where they can monitor and control almost every step in the process by computer. The laboratory technician is an integral part of the process. They take various samples and analyze them for compliance with permit parameters. 
One important analysis is conducting a microscopic analysis of the activated sludge. The technician can see the types, population, and health of the microorganisms and determine if any operational changes need to be made. Together, these professionals ensure proper operation of these facilities and ensure that we have clean water for the future. Again, thank you for your time in watching the presentation on water utility operations and the careers that you could end up having. For more information, get with your teacher or your counselor or visit the Teeks website, which is teeks.org water. Thank you and have a great day.